So welcome to part two of Wi-Fi 6 Explained. I'm gonna give you some more detail on the Wi-Fi 6 and you can decide if you wanna make that jump now or wait till later. But if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check that out first and then come back and see this video. So let's start off by explaining a little bit more about Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi 1, which is 802.11a, started off at the 5 gigahertz frequency band. And the speed was at 54 megabits per second. And the range was about 115 feet indoor. And actually the 802.11a wasn't used commercially. Now the 802.11b was the first commercially used Wi-Fi signal. Now it used the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band and the speed was only 11 megabits per second. And just like the A, it had a range of about 115 feet. When 802.11g came into the picture, it bumped the speed up to 54 megabits per second, used the same 2.4 gigahertz frequency and extend the range up to 125 feet. Following the G was 802.11n. Now N was the first time the dual band was introduced, which means it could support the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz frequency band. And the speed on the N was way past the previous version because it was coming in at 600 megabits per second. And the range was bumped up to about 230 feet. Following the 802.11n was 802.11ac, and it's running on the 5 gigahertz frequency band. Now the estimated speed of the AC is 3.4 gigabits per second, but the range dropped down between 120 and 150 feet, compared to the 230 feet of the N. Now with the brand new 802.11ax, which is Wi-Fi 6, it has a data speed of 14 gigabits per second, and the range is claimed to be better than AC. It's not really specific to set yet because I don't see any data on it, but they say better than AC. Now the frequency of AX is supposed to be 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz. But doing my research, it said it's gonna span between one gigahertz and seven gigahertz. So it seems like they're trying to add more frequency band to reduce interference, which is a topic I will be covering in a few. Now that one to seven frequency range is not really set in stone, but I hear the next one that's supposed to hit the market is the six gigahertz. Okay, so the next two things I'm gonna cover is the frequency and the speed. Now the speed is gonna make you decide if you wanna jump to the Wi-Fi six or just wait. But let's talk about the importance of the frequency first. Now the 2.4 gigahertz frequency is a very busy frequency. There's so many things that use that frequency band and can cause interruption in your Wi-Fi surfing. So let me give you an example of some things that runs on that frequency, even if you don't have it in your home. You got baby monitors, wireless mics, wireless speakers, cordless phones, garage door openers, wireless keyboard and mice, game controllers, and the microwave oven in your kitchen, all of these items can interfere with your Wi-Fi signal. So if you're ever wondering why your streaming is buffering or you have an issue connecting, well, a lot of the stuff might be going on in your home and causing interference with your Wi-Fi signal. So that's why they developed the five gigahertz to reduce or eliminate those interference. Now the AX is trying to come up with even a broader range. So they're trying to use frequency from one to seven to give you more option and reduce those interference. But don't expect that right out the gate from the AX. It's still coming out the door with 2.4 and the five gigahertz. But eventually they're gonna add more frequency. And I think the first one they're gonna add is the six gigahertz. Now your items that you have have to support that frequency. So the things you have now will not be capable of connecting to that six. So every time they decide to beef up like the Wi-Fi signal and stuff like that, you have to end up buying newer products to take advantage of that new technology. So think about that before you jump ship. Make sure the product that you have can support that higher signal. Now when it comes to the range, it started off at 115. And as you can see, when it went to N, it went up to 230 feet. But for some strange reason, when it went to AC, it dropped down to 120 to 150 feet. And AX supposed to be a little bit better in range than the AC, but it's still gonna be lower than N. Now the range is not really a big deal, even though the range is reduced, because most of these manufacturers offer a mesh system where you can have multiple satellite to increase that range. Now, even though it seems like the speed is going up and the range is going down, with the mesh system, 
that's going to take care of that range problem okay so the last topic we're going to talk about is speed okay so if your isp is giving you a download speed of say 100 megabits therefore if you have say a 802.11g which only goes up to about 54 megabits per second that means your wi-fi cannot go past that 54 megabits per second because that's its maximum capability so in order to gain that full benefit what your isp is giving you you would have to move up to the end which can handle 600 megabits per second. And that goes for every single router and ISP data that's coming across. So that's how you determine which Wi-Fi router you need based on the speed that's coming from your ISP. Now at the same time, if your ISP providing you say 200 megabits per second and you go out and buy this new Wi-Fi 6 router, your internet surfing inside your home using the Wi-Fi is not going to increase any faster than the speed that your ISP is providing you. And your ISP is not giving you 14 gigabits per second, at least at the time of this video. So keep that in consideration based on the Wi-Fi router that you're trying to get. So simply put, if you want to go with the new AX, that is fine. You, you can gain all the benefits of the new technology and all that stuff. But don't expect the speed of your Wi-Fi to increase. And at the same time, if your ISP is giving you more megabits per second, and you got an older router well it's time for you to upgrade your router because you're not getting the full benefit of what your isp is giving you so you're robbing yourself because you're paying them more and you're not taking advantage of it now the wi-fi speed does have benefits in other ways so say you're trying to transfer data from one computer to the next now based on your wi-fi speed you can take full advantage of the top speed of that router. Now, three things have to match up for you to take full advantage of that speed. If your router is the new Wi-Fi 6, then computer one has to have a network Wi-Fi card that's capable of handling Wi-Fi 6, and computer two has to have the same capability also. If all three are on the same Wi-Fi 6 signal, then you're gonna get the full maximum speed, that 14 gigabits per second from one computer to the next when you're transferring data. So if you're transferring a music file, for instance, from one computer to the next, it's gonna just zip across. So that speed is gonna come into play when you're transferring stuff from one to the next. As far as the speed coming for your ISP, you can't go past the capability of what your ISP is giving you. So it's not gonna speed up anything as far as downloading from the internet because that speed is governed by your ISP and not necessarily a Wi-Fi router, unless you have an older one. All right, before I end this video, let's go back to frequency. So if your device has the choice to choose between the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz frequency range, choose the 5, especially if you have something that's streaming, like your Fire TV stick, or any other streaming device that you have. Set those at the 5 gigahertz and not the 2.4. Now there are some devices that still run in the 2.4 and there's nothing you can do about that, but those devices don't usually use a constant stream. Like my June oven, basically it probably just check into the internet to stay on time and to download updates, but it's not constantly downloading stuff from the internet or uploading, so interference doesn't really matter on my June oven. But it does matter when you're streaming from the internet, like your TV is connected to the Wi-Fi or your Fire Stick. So put as much stuff as you can on the five gigahertz frequency and leave the 2.4 for the stuff that can't. So go back into your devices and check the Wi-Fi to make sure they run it on the five. Because if the device is not capable of picking up the 5G signal, you're not gonna see it as a choice anyway. All right, so that's gonna be it for this topic. I hope it was helpful in some form or another. If you have any questions or comment, leave it below. I wanna thank you for taking the time for watching this video. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.